we got to talk about some Louisiana. Oh yeah, let's so talk about it. So we're big LSU fans. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. We love. We went down to Baton Rouge for uh, the Bama LSU game. Didn't get to cheer once. Uh huh. They got the shit kicked out. No, of them. Oh. we we cheered a lot. Oh yeah, before pre-game. the game. I yeah. mean, before the game, the environment yeah. was like nothing that I've ever seen. Yeah. The tailgate situation was just insane. Friendly, oh. huge coach in the world. guys. We had him on the show. Fucking love Coach, you like coach Ogeron. Oh, on? Yeah. yeah. We love well, Coach. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's best, awesome. best accent of all time. What is it about Louisiana? Like, there's something about Louisiana that just is, it's like this mystic, alluring quality to it that I can't really put my finger on. That, and you're from there, so can you explain it maybe? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, dude, a lot of legend lives down there. You know, it's a, like a lot of places, it's more, it's like the rumor belt. You know, people still don't trust electricity technology that much. Think every, you know, you're not going to find a lot of, you know, you're still people running on 3G down there. You get outside of the city limits. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? 3G, that's a fuck. I like you, that's you know. the point that we've reached now where like mystics and ghosts and yeah. shit is on the same wavelength as 3G. 3G. Slightly yeah. inconvenient self the tail, service. The tall, <laughs> tall tale of 3G. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he can barely get a full JPEG. Oh, you, know? you get out of the swamp, you hear oh, the 3G man. winds <laughs> whistling through the you trees. You can't download a podcast over an hour down there. Mm. Oh, you can't, it bro. Sucks. <laughs> oh, you listen to 15 minutes and just kind of just imagine just what the last 45 would be like. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. that kind of place. It's the kind of place you still have to use your imagination, you know? Right. And they have a lot of different textures in the land. You know, they got a lot of swamps, which are very mysterious. You know, they have a lot of, like, hearsay. Just the kind of things that keep kind of, like, story and legend alive. You know, a lot of places, they washed out all the legend. So you also say that you grew up in the uh, stray animal belt of America. Yeah. I I love that saying, and I just imagine you having, like, just raccoons and cats and dogs and... Fuck, we had a batch of lemurs come through one year, dude. <laughs> I don't know where they were from. <laughs> What, so like they're they just escaped everywhere? the zoo? Yeah. I wouldn't say a zoo, but I think they escaped somebody, somebody who maybe a startup zoo. Yeah, there are a lot of startup zoos down there. Remember that guy like in Ohio? Of, there are a lot of like uh, sanctuaries where it's just like a dude and some gators that he wrestles. Yeah. Um, gator farms. Yeah. yeah. Well, they used to have a dude. I remember they had a gay guy who would come fight a bear during like on college campuses, and they would bring him by and do you know wrestling or something in the lobbies of uh or not lobby like at a bar you'd go see them you know and it was like five dollars and the bear had all of its uh toenails pulled out or whatever sure, but you could go watch them and people would watch them it wasn't really it was more hugging like hard hard hugging yeah. right why was it a gay guy why did that was they that, said that bigger it was draw? It's, it's a, a bear. bigger it's draw, a bigger draw. Yeah. got it yeah but yeah and the toughest gay guy, dude, let me tell you this, Louisiana got the toughest fucking gay dudes ever, man. Shout out to my boy Billy Conforto that I used to Shout roll with, Billy. and he got, he passed away, but he, oh, um, fuck. oh, dude, bro, he fuck you up, man. You can't even imagine what he looked like, and while you're thinking about what he looks like, he mm. fuck you up, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm so proud of it. And he'll sell you weed, too. I love it. While well, fucking yeah. you up. And, he'll fucking th- and then he'll take your brother out for ice cream, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Toughest dude ever looked like Don Flamenco, dude. Uh-huh. Right? 40 years old. We were bus boys together. We used to bus boy over by this dude's place who the guy wasn't even a chef, told everybody he was a chef, started making food at a high end restaurant, right? <laughs> And it was garbage, bro. And, but did people, did he keep a job or did they fire him? Did they oh, immediately dude. like... No, we worked there for two years, dude. A lot of fucking dirty <laughs> yeah. duck coming out of the fucking... I mean... As long as you <laughs> say a, a thing with enough confidence, yeah. people like let you go by. They're yeah, like, oh, yeah. that must be his, it, the Louisiana flavor that's coming out. It's like, right. no, the dude just doesn't know how to cook. Oh, yeah. And he had that hat. I mean, that's the thing about a chef's job. A lot of jobs that come with a hat, you, you know... You immediately believe the person has the degree and the years of culinary experience. Right, yeah. right. You know, Hat jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. this dude. Yeah, he had a. Yeah, he had a couple of Cutco knives and a fucking, you know, a batch of rare olives, and he called himself a chef, dude. <laughs> but there was a lot of rich people would come up there because rich people don't know what the fuck they're doing, dude. If you no. put candles up, you know, you put candles up, they'll fucking show up and pay an extra sixty, right? Right. You so the little fork. I oh, feel yeah. like that's once you get the once you get to like the fit the third little fork, you're like, oh, well, this must be nice. Oh, yeah. The amount of forks is. What the level is? Oh, nice and then there's an even smaller little <laughs> yeah. thing where you're just. Like, what am I doing with this fork? <laughs> yeah, this fork is to, to put like you just don't know. There's just like seven pieces of fucking yeah, yeah. utensils. If you have a black tablecloth, to me, I'm like, okay, this is a nice. Yeah. Restaurant. This is nice. As yeah. long as it's not plastic and like red and white checkered, then yeah. I'm like, okay, right. Um, yeah. But yeah, stray animals. Remember, remember they used to have more stray animals. Yeah. Like now, everybody animal has ownership. Some animals have a fucking chip in them. You dude. know what it is? Bob mm-hmm. Barker. He yeah. changed everything. And his wife, too, or Betty White. Yeah. Mm. They got all the animals spayed and neutered, which is probably a good thing. Uh, 
Yeah, we saw you. You like to see a dog walking around with balls? Yeah. Well, like I like to see a dog who teaches the asshole in the neighborhood who's really boss. You know that Mother Nature runs the battleship. <laughs> you just like alphas. Well, I just like there to be alphas because you got to even it all out, man. Right. If you're running around with a bunch of people hopped up on fucking fish oil down here in Manhattan, yeah. the Jewish Atlanta, then you don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> what, you what, know? what about um, if you just spayed all the dogs, so you still left all the males intact, so they could go around mm. proving alphaness, but the females couldn't get pregnant? Like on birth control, that's basically what we do in the United States. Can dogs do birth control? Is or we not? just trust women Ooh. to take birth control because guys are too dumb it, to use it properly. Yeah, and they're not taking it; they're lying to people. You think so? Yeah. Really? You, are you speaking from experience? Oh yeah, dude. I'm speaking from every guy's experience. A lot of women are lying about it. They say they're taking it and they're not. Yeah. And they're using the kids to get lawsuits. You know, it's I don't know, man. We've I've opened up nine cans of worms, dude, and we well, just I have one go, fish and. Pole. I want to go back to one can of worm. Okay. Dog balls are weird. You don't see them very much off. Like you, like we're saying, like you don't. Right, you don't dogs, see them. You don't. Dog balls are one of those things. Like it's almost. I mean, you re- reference Game of Thrones, so I assume you watch. On the uh, first season, I'm on episode four. <laughs> you fucker! <laughs> I was wondering. You said swinging like Ned Stark. I was like, oh, he's awesome, isn't he? He's the best. You're gonna love the rest of. The, he's awesome. Season yeah. eight, he's awesome. He's awesome. Uh, fucking... But the dragons were like lore. Dog balls are gonna be like that. Dra- dog balls are the new dragons. Like, yeah. Remember dog balls. You, know, you don't see them ever. Oh yeah, you don't. Oh yeah, dude. When I was young, you and that's how you learned about sex: watching a couple dogs fuck. You know, <laughs> the, it's better than the watching birds and the bees. It was just like the rabid dog in the backyard's fucking again. Yeah, yeah the fucking birds and the bees. Yeah. Shots, Damn, come dude. look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you own any of these animals? Like, did any of them? Not, maybe not own because you can't own it, a stray animal. But like, they just hung out the Vaughn household. You know, in the in our neighborhood, you had a lot of stray animals. You go outside, there's stray animals out there. Right. They got a big dog in a neighborhood, you know? Somebody shot a big dog with an arrow in our neighborhood with a fucking bow and arrow what one the time. What fuck? Did it live? It was a, uh, no, it didn't Come live, on. dude. Yeah. How you do that? That's a bummer. It was a, it was a French guy that moved in our area, and it was he shot a Rottweiler. Remember they used to have Rottweilers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're yeah. still around. So that way the bully was always, the, there was a ch- like checks and bullyances. Like the bully always had a, had a system where he wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? The dog had a chance to come to the fuck, the weak guy's rescue. Like there was just more animals around. Like they had more stray animals. Yeah, you had dog balls everywhere. You yeah. had fucking an ecosystem. Yes, you had more of an ecosystem. You know, uh, a lot of people when they get their dogs neutered, they put fake dog balls inside the sack so the dog doesn't know. Oh. What? Uh, the dog knows. That's a little too much. The dog knows. They're called nudicles. Oh. Oh really? Yeah. I used to work at a place that uh, I was a dog salesman. I was a used dog salesman. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, bro. like, uh, there, people would bring in on their the strays. On the bark market, bro, out on the bark <laughs> market. <laughs> They'd bring in their strays, and then it was my job to, like, get all these strays and take them outside, like, a PetSmart or outside of Petco or, you know, a grocery store in the neighborhood and set up the cages and then just try to get these dogs adopted. So I'd have a bunch of shitty dogs that had, like, T, uh, ticks and fleas and all that stuff that we were trying to take care of and then I get one puppy a day and if you had a puppy oh. you were good you were good to go so you'd use that puppy and go out and you'd wave at cars with a little puppy paw mm-hmm. and that's how you draw the customers in and they'd be like I want to adopt that puppy I'd be like no this puppy's already adopted but can <laughs> I interest little rock? But, yeah, but can I interest you in this catahoula <laughs> in this uh, anemic catahoula oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. so I'd try to switch them the old bait and switch it was actually a very rewarding job yeah you want this wamarana with a shellfish allergy over here <laughs> Let me introduce you to one of my bad boys in the yeah. back. Yeah. yeah, remember they had that show Pound Puppies back in the day? It was a bunch of dogs that were all fucking sick and dying, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just like everything now, it just feels so safe out there. But but it's not really, so you're not getting preparation. But yeah, we lived in a strand animal belt, man. We had all kind of, what else, dude? Raccoons? You'd see a bunch of raccoons out there fucking fist fighting in the morning, dude. <laughs> you know, a couple mixed boys out there fucking just beating each other up near the recycling bin. You know what the internet's done to raccoons, though? It's made people think that raccoons raccoons are like the sweetest animals they're not. in the world yeah and they're not at all because all you see is the, the cutest videos yeah. It's like yeah raccoons are vine stars you get mm-hmm. them off that six second loop all of a sudden they're coming at you they're like oh, biting yeah. your toes and giving you rabies yeah oh yeah man raccoons are really i mean they're burglars man if you look at them they're really they're always in the garbage they're kind of the homeless animal mm-hmm. even though all animals are technically homeless you know you know, according to God, but they're they're the homeless animal, really. Yes. They act homeless. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm fucking out here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Give me a scarf, yeah, you know? Let me, have a, let me have a dollar, and then they'll yeah. just they'll pack you right as you get you get your hand in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let me do a backflip for a dollar. That's <laughs> yeah. a big trick down in New Orleans, dude. <laughs> yeah.